In a previous video, we demolished a lean-to conservatory on the back of our bungalow. I explained the reasons for that in that video and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. And we're gonna be using this space to accommodate the outdoor sofas and coffee table that I also made in a recent video, link to that down below as well. Now, originally we had intended to leave this concrete slab in place and just have a small step up to the new area. Problem is, this concrete slab is level with the damp proof course on our house and I think there's some building regulation around exterior ground level needing to be 150 millimeters below the damp proof course. That 150 millimeter recommendation basically ensures that rainfall splash back on exterior floors won't splash onto the walls of the property above damp proof course level, causing damp in the walls. There are potentially some ways around that. For example, I could build a pergola, pergola, however you say it, above this space with an overhang, which will keep the walls dry. But there's also a second issue in that this small step up could create a trip hazard, probably not for us, but potentially for a small child. After reading through the comments on the previous demolition video, many of which suggested I should just hire or buy a second-hand concrete breaker and remove the slab and lay a new floor level with the rest of the patio, I started coming around to the idea. So I started looking into tool hire and looking for second-hand breakers on Facebook Marketplace. I also sent an email to Milwaukee, who are a tool sponsor of the channel, to see if they wanted to help. A few days later, this behemoth arrived. Now, as this isn't the kind of work that I typically do, I'm a woodworker, not a builder or a demolition person. I know nothing about concrete breakers and I had no idea that cordless battery operated concrete breakers were even a thing. Nor did I know that Milwaukee made a totally different battery platform to power them with these giant MX fuel batteries. And this is totally another I'm not worthy tool moment for me. I'm sure there are tradesmen out there that would kill for a tool like this and I can't quite believe that I'm fortunate enough to be able to use it, but I'm not going to let that spoil my fun and I have to say, I'm really looking forward to trying this out. Does anyone know what these bugs are, by the way? There are millions out here today and they seem to really like my yellow shorts. But then I guess, who doesn't? One other thing to mention just before I get started, our plumber visited at the weekend and he removed the radiator. You'll see he had to chisel away at the concrete himself to get to the pipes. So I'm using the point breaker bit here. You also get a chisel bit in the box with the tool. This worked incredibly well for breaking up the slab, which was between four and five inches thick or 100 to 150 millimeters. And my wife wanted to have a go too. I really didn't know how long this was going to take having never done anything like this before. I ended up breaking it all up in two sessions. The battery life of the tool was really impressive. In fact, each time I broke up the concrete, I was exhausted before it was. So I could just pop it on charge again, ready for the next session. According to the Milwaukee website, you can break a 40 foot by one foot, six inch thick piece of concrete on one charge. And I think that correlates pretty well with my experience. I did this whole slab on just two full battery chargers. I'll give more thoughts on this tool towards the end of the video. After doing this for a while, I learned that a better technique was to basically hammer down with the tool and then use the leverage of the tool to pull it backwards and push it forward to help create a slight gap between each chunk of concrete. And that made picking up the concrete much easier. If you don't do that, it tends to be quite difficult to pick up because it's all kind of interlocked with the bits next to it, if that makes sense. This was the final bit of breaking, doing the bit between the slab and the wall of the house, which I was a bit apprehensive about, but actually it came away from the wall really easily. All of the large bits of rubble I moved around to the front of the house and I can take all this to a local company who basically take it for free, then they grind it all up and then sell it on as hardcore. It's good to be able to not have to pay for disposal of stuff like this. All of the smaller bits of rubble I'm going to put to one side in a separate pile as I can make use of all this for the sub base of the new patio that I'm going to be laying. Oh and if you wondered where that random little conifer went that was next to the slab, we dug that out and found a new home for it in a pot by our front door. So I did some digging here in the corner because I wanted to find out where the foundations were for the conservatory that sat here originally. And I need to figure out where to install my posts for the pergola. Originally I was planning on digging holes so that I could put the posts in the holes and post crete or concrete them in. 
But unfortunately, there isn't enough space between the foundations and the existing slabs to dig that hole. I just wouldn't be able to get the post hole diggers in there, either here or here. And I don't really want to mess around with the existing slabs because they're all good and solid. So instead, I'm going to get some post holders and I'm going to sit them somewhere on the old foundations. But I need to figure out the best position for them in relation to the new slabs that are going to be installed here. And the new slabs are smaller than the older slabs. The new slabs are 450 by 450 millimeters. And that's what this paint here represents. Obviously, I also need to allow for a 10 millimeter gap between the old slabs and the new. Now I'm gonna do exactly the same job on the other side. And at that point, I'll be able to figure out exactly where my posts are going. And that will enable me to do a drawing for the pergola so that I can then order in all of the materials that I'll need. So here's the foundation on the other side and I must have got a bit too gung-ho here with the breaker in this area as I'd broken off the corner of it. And at this point I wasn't sure whether that would create a problem or not in regards to the posts, but more on that later. The next job was to shift a layer of soil about 4 inches or 100 millimetres from the area. Digging is one of my least favourite jobs and it ended up taking us most of the day. The soil was really compact so it helped to break it up with a fork before shoveling it into the wheelbarrow and we made two big piles out the front of the house which we listed on Facebook Marketplace for free in the hope that someone will come and take it away. At this point we had dug out to just below the level of the foundation and I'd already measured the distance between that foundation and the existing slabs and that was 120 millimeters. So I knew that I needed to aim for about 30 millimeters lower than the foundation to get us to the 150 millimeter depth, which should give us enough space for a 50 to 60 millimeter sub base of hardcore, and then 50 millimeters for a mortar bed, and then the slabs which will go on top are about 38 millimeters thick. Then we could start cleaning off the foundation, and we're doing this for two reasons. One, the mortar bed will be able to stick to it better, and two, we can paint on it to mark up and help us figure out where we want our slabs and our posts to be. I cut a 10 millimeter slot into a piece of card, and this is going to represent the gap between each slab. So I carefully measured and marked out each 450 millimeter slab. On the right hand side as you look at the space it made sense to start with a full slab and put the post in the corner where it would be easy to cut the slab to fit around it and the post holder will be fully supported by the foundations. On the other side though putting the post in the corner of one of these slabs wasn't possible as it would be hanging off either one edge or the other of the foundation so we decided we'd put it along the edge somewhere in the middle and then we'd just have to notch out the slab to fit around it. We can then measure from the outside of one post to the next to figure out what size timber we'd need. None of these paint marks are final by the way, they're just helpful to give us a rough idea at this point. It's likely that we'll need to move them slightly depending on the size of the roof sheets that we'll be using, but more on that in the next video. Next I can start putting the rubble back in and this is all going to need to be compressed down using a Wacker plate machine. And I don't have one of those, I need to hire one so I'll probably show that in the next video. So the pergola build is going to happen. We're going to do a pergola with a roof using polycarbonate sheets. You might even be able to see the timber behind me, which I picked up this morning. Unfortunately, the old polycarbonate that we took off the conservatory really wasn't in good enough condition to reuse. Plus, we didn't have enough of it for what we wanted to build. The old stuff will get reused, though. My cousin's going to take it away and reuse it on an outbuilding, so that's good. The pergola is something that we went back and forth on a few times, mainly because it'll cost quite a lot of money that we don't really have, as the real priorities here for the house are re-roofing it and putting in new windows. But as I'll be doing the work myself, it's just the materials that we need to find the money for. It's just that those materials are eye-wateringly expensive at the moment. But it'll be really nice to be able to make use of the space no matter what the weather and be under shelter. So we're going to go for it and the roof and the windows will have to wait. I'll cover all the costs of the pergola and everything in that future build video. As for removing the concrete, I really wasn't sure how that was going to go, but the cordless Milwaukee breaker made it really quick and easy. I think it took just a few hours to break up and remove all the concrete. It has far more power than I expected. It really broke through the four to five inch thick concrete slab with no issues at all. I thought vibration might be an issue for me as I do get pain in my lower right arm and wrist when using tools that vibrate, but I can honestly say that this tool didn't cause any issues whatsoever. The handles of the tool almost feel like they're detached from the part of the tool that vibrates, so you really don't feel much of the vibration at all. It is really quite heavy to move around, but that weight is a good thing when it comes to breaking concrete because it makes it really quite effortless. You don't need to push down on the tool, it does the work for you. 
I did notice that the aluminium shaft, as in the bit that holds the bit, got quite hot after I'd been using the tool for a while. I was wearing shorts and I moved the tool around using my foot to guide the bit where I wanted it. So a few times that aluminium touched my leg and it was really hot. But yeah, really excellent tool and really quite fun to use. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly videos if you'd like to help support the channel, plus get early access to my videos, exclusive content, free project plans and cut lists, and a name credit at the end of my videos. I'll leave links to my Patreon page and YouTube channel membership in the description box below. Thanks for watching.